Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and it is Thursday, and as we do every Thursday, well, <laughs> occasional exceptions, <laughs> um, we uh, get together and um, we draw. Here's JJ and uh, a sleeping pug. Oh, she really but, wants to be held this morning, just a little baby. Well, it's chilly today. I so, um, So what we do every week is we get together, we find a thing to draw, we draw it. I draw it, and you can see what I'm doing, but you can also do, you can draw along with me, you can draw your own thing, you can just hang out and chat, whatever you'd like to do. It is just an opportunity to have fun and make art, which is what we should be doing at least once a week. <laughs> One hour of every week. Yes. So. Um, <clears throat> Last week, unfortunately, we were not able to get together as um, I had a, a kind of an emergency with my finger, of all things. That's not, a, that's not, a, that's not a, an editorial thing. It is simply a fact that it's I had. It's the truth. Yeah. So, it's a hard truth. So I had uh, a finger incident that continues to resolve, but I was in the ER. So it's fine now. Fine-ish. Getting yeah, to be fine. Yeah, it's still, still tender. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah. So Thankfully, it's not on your drawing it's, hand. It's not my drawing hand, it's true. So so um, <clears throat> we are going to start drawing in a, little, in a few minutes, but I wanted to make a couple of announcements. First of all, I want to say that we have our friends from Hanamula are sponsoring this episode. They sure are. And we are going to be using the Gray Book, which is a beautiful sketchbook with gray drawing paper in it, which I really enjoy working in. And we can work in colors. We can work in colors that are lighter than gray, which is which is fun to do. And there's and there's a pretty awesome giveaway. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be giving away. What are we giving away today? Uh, we are giving away. Let me just go. I thought I had this all ready to go, but of course, uh, we have multiple copies of the fabulous gray book multiple copies multiple copies oh my gosh my page yeah they are scintillating and gripping five, from page to page five gray books five five gray books that's a lot yeah that's, that's a, a really juicy giveaway that is that is thank good. you so, hanamula yeah so if you would like it um write to us at info at sketchbookschool.com we need you to have a u.s mailing address because we're sponsored by hanamula usa but um and if you f care to send a snail mail there's our P.O. box as well. Uh, write to us and tell us, A, that you would like to get this this book, B, that you have some reason that you would like. Yeah, give me a reason to give pick you. Give us a you. reason to pe I mean, get picked. Look, give give me something. Give me something. Make me laugh, make me cry. <laughs> JJ's flattery, in charge of this. Flattery works. JJ, who's off camera, is, is I like in charge pugs. of this. Um, but also, please remember to give us your mailing address. It's always extraordinary. And, and, and uh, sad when people send us a, des a request, but they don't tell us where to send them the book. So that eliminates you, unfortunately. So, so feel free, right? Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Except for... When it's not good. <laughs> when it's bad. <laughs> but most of it is good. It's generally good. Look, we across the comments, I'm seeing a lot of good weather. It's the first time that's happened in a, in a bit of an age. Not here. Here it's it's cold, but it's minimal. sunny. Look, it's something different for us. We appreciate the yes. one week of a season that we get that's not summer. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that it seems like almost everyone here is reporting uh, all is well. It is. It is still January, so let's be reasonable here, at least in the United States in the northern hemisphere. We have still a few more months. And can we just suffering. talk about the fact that January just flew by? Like, what happened to January? It's what happened to our vacation? Well, this time last month, we were riding on the ranch. We've talked about the ranch quite a lot, so I don't think we wanted Laura to... says it was 18 this morning. Oh, Laura, you need to move. <laughs> <laughs> just need to move. Marilyn says it was very windy in New York. But I have to say, yesterday it was warmer in New York than it was in Phoenix. So, yeah, whatevs. Um, Garrett says he won a gray book last year, and he's going to not apply again. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Hashi's pointed out, P 
People drew ravens in our absence. Yeah, I know. But you know what? It, 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 we'll, we'll make an addendum to next week's pre-roll. We can do that, can't we? Sure. Yes. They were beautiful. Some of them were really beautiful. Week, and honestly, the raven was like so teed up to be very tasty on the, the gravy. The raven would have been very nice. Very tasty. Um, but we aren't doing the raven this week because, because we did it. Because it's not Edgar it was, Allan Poe's birthday exactly, anymore. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So, so we get, gave up on doing that. Last week, we had to cancel at the last minute. Some folks were here. They saw that it was a raven. They went off and drew a raven. That was great. Thank you for that initiative. But today, we are celebrating Indian Republic Day. Is that what it is? Indian Republic yeah, Day. Yeah, not Indian Independence Day, yeah. which is, in fact, a different day. Yes, that's in August. Chain. Oh, August. Is it August? Okay. But we, I mean, I have to say, any opportunity for us to think about India, we are, we are... I love India. I mean, honestly, I think it would be my dream vacation. Um, we love everything about it. We love the food, the culture, the people, the history. The art. The art. Yes. So, yeah, we're, so we're, t we're opting we're in into India. to India Republic Day. <laughs> we're into India, uh, and we're going to celebrate Indian Republic today. Indian Republic Day today. Um, hopefully some of you guys are from India. We occasionally have some Indian visitors. We have some sketchbook school students who are Indians. But uh, India, you know, it's about to become the most populous country in the world, thanks to China having such a low birth rate. So, yeah. It's Australia Day as well, Oh, says my Aaron. goodness. It is? Dang it. Okay, well. I mean, on the last Draw With Me, we were prestidigitating. Is that the word? No. It, we the didgeridoo we did we get and the things with the letter d we gave a nod to australia upcoming australia day kind of yeah with didgeridoo I mean, yes not, is that possibly. australian it's not the didgeridoo is australian i thought or it was it is it is i wasn't getting the indigenous people in australia do play the didgeridoo yeah and, uh, so. there's also dingoes there's what other things start with d there's a bunch of australian things that start with a d i think anyway crocodile dundee <laughs> Yes. Sorry, sorry, Australian friends. I know that was not kind. All right, let's move on. Yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. We, we'll do us. We'll do something with Australia soon. We should. Danny lived in Australia. I did. My sister was born in Australia. Yeah. So um, we're doing. We're celebrating India today. Yes, India well, so Republic Day. The other thing I wanted to talk about is if you'll give me uh, um, an opportunity to talk about <laughs> my dip pen class. So this is a new course that we are releasing today. Um, some of you may remember last year, or was it a year? It was maybe longer ago. Oh, I think I it was did a I did a one day workshop on how to use a dip pen, which you've possibly seen me use here. I love to draw with it. I love to write, particularly with it, to do lettering. And I came up with this class, and I just took all the stuff that I've been learning to do with a dip pen for years. Uh, dip pens are kind of scary to people, and um, so I wanted to demystify them. So I made this class, and now we've turned it into a course that you can take whenever you want to, as of today. You sign up for it. You have lifetime access to it. You also get access to the schoolyard. It's reasonably priced, I have to say. It's, it's, it is better priced, I think, or lower priced than uh, any course we've done for a long time, if not that. Um, and you can sign Look, up for price it. price is not the issue. It is, it is, it is worth priceless it is priceless learnings. It's you true. get to spend time with Annie. This is a thing that we've been asked for. We, I have to say, <laughs> it wasn't like at the top of our list to do, but so many people ask us, after we promote these workshops for a month, sometimes longer, inevitably, like the requests, how do I buy it? How do I experience it? How do I... It's like, guys, guys. A lot, anyway, yes, a lot of you liked it, but I have but, to but say, this is the first time we've ever made a workshop into a course. Into a course. So, yeah, so if you took the workshop, don't, don't sign up for don't the course. Don't buy it. Thank you. It's yes. similar material, but if you did sign, if you haven't, if you missed it, here's the chance. Here's your chance. Uh, Atomic Elf just bought a glass dip pen. I don't really talk about glass dip pens specifically, although a lot of the techniques I teach you will work there. I happen to like a flexible metal nib, but glass is cool too. Yeah. Although I. I'm so accident prone that I would probably shatter it quickly. <laughs> so let me just show you this. I want to let you in on a creative secret. There's a tool that artists used for thousands of years to make incredibly expressive, elegant, and beautiful drawings in ink and watercolor, even in tea and coffee. And today, it's almost been forgotten. It's called the dip pen. 
now in my special online course. I'm gonna teach you how to draw and write beautiful letters with this amazing tool. We'll make some great drawings and letter the alphabet and a quotation. You don't need much in the way of drawing or calligraphy experience to have a great time and you'll come away excited and confident about adding a dip pen and lots of nibs to your art kit. I hope you'll join me. All right, so that's the dip pen course. It is um, you know, available right now. We just published it this morning. I think, honestly, the email was meant to go out 12 minutes ago. Yes, first so if, email. You, if yeah. you're on our mailing list, hopefully you are on our mailing yeah. list. If you're not, if you're not on, you should get yeah. on it. And on we just it. sent out a thing this morning about it. So yeah, and I think if you sign up in the, if you sign up, you will also be, you'll get to be a member of the schoolyard. If you get to do that, we're going to be doing some stuff around the dip pen, right? We're going to be doing some, some cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to make this a most fun dip into dip pen moment that we possibly can. Monica says, sometimes people reach out to me after posting my art, asking how I do it. And I refer them to SBS dip pen class, but that you couldn't they, until now. now yeah. You just, thank you for doing it. Maybe that, that's why people kept emailing me about how do I get the dip pen class. Monica told us to can't take this class. Yeah. So yeah. So there's lots of different things. Judy says, I have many dip pens. A lot of us do. I used to have a lot of dip pens too until, you know what I did? I, I went and I got a lot of old instruction manuals, some of them from the 1930s. And I studied them and I said, there's got to be a way to learn how to use this tool. People have been using it for literally hundreds, if not thousands of years. They've been using a dip pen. And I thought, like, there's got to be a technique that I can learn. So I went, I studied these old books written by Arthur Guptill and various other people. And I practiced a lot and I talked to people who did it. And eventually I figured out a simple method that I think anybody can learn. And I think a lot of people who have taken this course did learn it. It'll just take you a couple hours. You'll start getting the basic hang of it. You'll get over your anxiety about it. And you'll learn to do both drawing, tones, cross-hatching, things like that. You'll also learn to do some lettering. So I think it will be fun. All right, are you ready to do some drawing now that we've done, we've been, we've done flogging stuff? Yeah. JJ. Okay, good. I hope we're not interrupting you, but JJ, <laughs> JJ is, you're corresponding with your friends. I understand. I mean, um, Betsy has her dip pens, dad's dip pens from years ago. That is very <coughs> cool. <laughs> yes. That is very cool. Keep the nibs, chuck the handles, definitely. You can buy a new Conor handle for eight bucks. Get that. But keep those nibs. That's another cool thing about when you start to get into dip pens. You can go onto eBay. You can go to calligraphy fairs and you can end up buying huge amounts of really cool nibs. And guess what? It costs like a couple of bucks a piece. So you can experiment. It's really, it's just a fun hobby to get into. Um, Atomic Elf says the scratchiness was a hurdle for me. Scratchiness is um, possibly a function of a bunch of things that I'll talk about in the course. It, 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 using a dip can, can be smooth and fluid and like, like skating on glass. But that scritchy scratchy, I actually like. It's that blending stump. I can't stand that thing you use with graphite. Oh, yeah, blending stump is a different story. Wall. But yes, so Horrible. scritchy scratch. All right, so let's let's get on with scritchy scratch. So here's what we when we talked about India, I figured there's a number of things that are very Indian, but I think the most representative thing, if you Google India, the first thing that will come up is the Taj Mahal. And the Taj Mahal is an iconic building that we all know really well. Like, you know instantly that's the Taj Mahal. However, how well do we really know it? So today we're going to draw the Taj Mahal and really study it and figure it out. And JJ, you've done a little bit of research that you're going to tell us yeah. some stuff about the Taj Mahal. I, I can, I can it's pepper. It's a fascinating building, you know, with an interesting history. And the architecture is extraordinary. It's, it's what is it, 17th century? Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> You better stop writing to your friends. And but people are curious about dip pens. All right, that's true. That's I mean, I'm trying to do <coughs> the service All that right. I feel called. I will to, rebuke to you later on. Um, but here's a beautiful picture of the Taj. Uh, incidentally, there's a credit for this photograph in the notes below. So if you want to find the actual photograph, um, it is available to you for free. 
um, and it is it is beautiful. Or you can do a screen grab. Um, yeah, because it's a little bit small here. Uh, you know, if we want to have room to see the page as, as which, which I'm drawing on. So here's what I'm thinking. It's a white building essentially. It is white, and I'm working on gray paper because I'm working in this wonderful gray book. So I'm going to work in a white colored pencil, and then I'm going to possibly use a, a regular colored pencil on top. I'm going to try. I have different white colored pencils that I'm going to try out. Um, we will figure it out. So, oh, Helen visited the Taj Mahal. Yes, that's that's beautiful. I've never been there. In Agra. Can we please go? That's a real yeah, bucket let's list. Finish this. Let's finish this drawing first. So, <laughs> JJ, you're gonna are you gonna type these and you're gonna read them? So we read them so that we can hear them. I mean, you're talking nonstop. When uh, am I supposed to interject? Let me start drawing now. So let me just say one thing about doing this drawing. Let's the thing about this building is it has a lot of geometry to it, and it has um, a lot of kind of proportions that we can figure out by looking at other parts of it. So well, I've, I've drawn this building a few times and it can be deceptive because for instance, trying to figure out the curves of the, um, the domes is one thing. And um, trying to figure out how tall are things, you know, the arches, if we wanted to really try and get it accurate, let's put some attempt into that. Another interesting thing is, and I don't know, I thought at first this was a function of this photograph. You see how the towers seem to be leaning in. They sure do. But that's not actually the, but they actually do lean in, right? It's not just that this is a wide angle photo. I think that they were designed to do that. Isn't that the case? Oh, geez. You, Optical you, illusions can be spotted everywhere. The architects and craftsmen of the Taj Mahal were masters proportions and tricks of the eye. When you first approach the main gate that frames the Taj, for example, the monument appears incredibly close and large, but as you get closer, it shrinks in size, exactly the opposite of what you'd expect. And although the minarets surrounding the tomb look perfectly upright, the towers actually lean outward, which serves both form and function. In addition to providing aesthetic balance, the pillars would crumble away from the main crypt in a disaster like an earthquake. Interesting. So we're gonna. I'm starting to draw the uh, just the, the first kind of onion-like dome here, and it's interesting to look at all these lines. So you have this curve here on the bottom, and then you have this curve at the top, and there's slightly different curves, and then there's going to be a lot of other kind of measurements we want to take here. So, for instance, this square, it's not even a square, it's a rectangle. This thing is essentially the width of the dome. But how long is it? I'm going to, so I'm going to be doing a fair amount of measuring, like I'm measuring the width of the dome right now. And it is precisely this width here is the same as this height here. You know, so I'm sure there's a lot of this kind of thing that we'll, be, we'll see in here, which is that these proportions are relative to each other will actually be really helpful to us because when we're drawing it, we can we can sort of see that uh, what these relationships are. And so when when I make this dome here, I'm not this arch here. I want to figure out where does it curve and. Um, what kind of a radius does that curve have? I mean, normally I, I don't I don't get super persnickety about say, this, this stuff. This is the kind of measuring I do it you sometimes. Don't typically, do I know I do you don't. You think it's like an urban sketching thing? I think it might be an anxiety slash angle thing, <laughs> but I think it's also it's also it is interesting that that's what this building is so much about these proportions, right? So you could do a quick fast kind of impressionistic sketch of it and that would be f perfectly fine just kind of trying to capture its character and you know i could do that too in this case i happen to just be kind of intrigued by all of these shapes within shapes and i just want to kind of get it right it's sort of a mode i think i'm in in general here's, in here's drawing a, these days here's an interesting yeah. question i don't believe anyone's ever asked uh does anyone know if there's a white ink for a fountain pen Oof. I'm not aware of that. I've... 
Yeah. Is David Pyle here? He would know. Dave, yeah, it's the, it's tricky because fountain pens can really be damaged by the wrong ink, and white ink tends to be really thick. I would doubt it. But what I would suggest is you try a dip pen because that's what I use. I use a dip pen all the time with white ink. And what kind of ink do you use? There's lots of kinds of ink. I like Winsor Newton calligraphy ink. Oh, Monica, Dr. Martin's white ink. Bombay yeah. makes a white ink for dip pen. For dip pens, yes, but not for fountain pens. There's lots of inks that you can use. There's, there's nice acrylic inks you can use as well. You know, so I would say, um, and, that, and that's another advantage to the dip pen is... You can use pretty much anything. It doesn't I've have, seen you use your coffee. It doesn't have complicated innards like a fountain pen does. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have any innards. No, it doesn't. It just has a stick. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it gumming up the works because basically you could, you could throw a dip pen into a dishwasher if you wanted to. Have I ever done that? Uh, the nibs you probably have. Possibly, yeah. As long as they don't go down the drain, you're fine. So... I would be very annoyed if you put G nibs down our garbage disposal. Oh, yes, so would I. Um, Speaking of that salad plate that you once used as a palette, yeah, I have noticed is now cracked. What does did anyone you do else? It? Does anyone else do this to their spouses? You just appropriate household materials for art. Picasso did. <laughs> Oh, there's David. All right, look. See, we... Art geek. We call David Pyle the art geek because he knows an awful lot. Plus, he's just this pretty neat guy. So, white inks require really bulky and heavy pigment par pigment particle size. Yeah. So that's the geek part of this answer. Very prone to clogging. And the early demise of fountain pens. Yeah, yep. fountain pen is just too fancy for white ink. I don't know that it's fancy. I mean, you can buy a fountain pen for real cheap but it is you know it's a it's a pretty complicated thing to move ink and f let it flow and it's, then and yeah, then store it inside it's because persnickety. yeah because once it sits inside the pen it starts to clog you know, just, up the yeah, work just get thicker so yeah, you gotta watch it man this is why did i ever choose this building <laughs> I'm not, I'm not feeling super confident. Right? Yeah, but. you're going to get like a hand cramp. I mean, the good news is once you've done one side, you have a blueprint for doing the other. I can just copy and paste. Yeah, this is when uh, the iPad would be quite handy, right? Yeah, there you go. So, what else can you tell us about it? What, Like, what's the story behind the Taj? Uh, I know it's a love story. Let's see, the most famous myth is probably false. According to popular legend, Shah Jahan wanted desperately for the mausoleum to be an exquisite masterpiece without an equal. To ensure no one could recreate the Taj Mahal's beauty, Shah Jahan supposedly severed the hands and gouged the eyes? The artisans and craftsmen? Jeez. Despite the prevalence of I've this gruesome like tale, that. historians have found no evidence to support the story, though it does heighten the drama of the romantic tragedy. So the romantic tragedy is that he... His wife died it, in childbirth. Yes. The, so the love of his life dies. And his plan was originally that he was going to build a matching Taj. Maybe it's called something else. And uh, it was going to be in black. And it was going to be across this pond that you see in the front. And there was going to be a black and white bridge. But they ended up spending so much time building this one. That, it, it's, uh, it was said the construction came to a halt after Shah Jahan was deposed by his son. Ironically, a child of Mumtaz Mahal, who's the wife we have been discussing. And imprisoned at the nearby Agra Fort. Some historians have dismissed this story as folklore, too. A lot of mystery. A lot of mystery. So what are the years? It's 14th century? Uh, let's see. i got to scroll. It was built between 1632 and 1647. Yeah, that's what I thought originally, 17th century. So A long time, a long, long time ago. 
All right, here, here's an interesting, um, I think particularly interesting for this audience. It changes color throughout the day. One of the allures of the Taj Mahal is its constantly changing hue. From dawn to dusk, the sun transforms the mausoleum. It may seem pearly gray and pale pink at sunrise, dazzling white at high noon, and an orange bronze when the sun sets. In the evenings, the Taj can appear translucent blue. Special tickets are even sold for full moon and eclipse viewings. Ooh, let's that do sounds that. So, that sounds super cool. Mm. Yeah. So there's also all this um, kind of elaborate work in the marble that it's, it's difficult to see when we're this far away. But there's a lot of beautiful carving and kind of lattice. Well, and as Helen uh, commented, it has inlaid gems oh it does really all right let me uh let me Inlay gems wow, yeah that i didn't know it says let me see let me see if i can find you something here oh i thought i saw something about it but i don't see it now anyway carry on well should we talk about india and in the indian republic day so indian republic day is when Basically, they passed their their uh, constitution, I guess, <coughs> and uh, their democracy. But they, of course, were lib liberated, I guess, from the British in 1949 during the War of Partition. And it came into effect on January 26, 1950, making India into a republic. Yeah, I, so I grew up in, or spent a lot of my childhood in Pakistan, which up until 1949, it and India were the same country. Um, but, I, I, and I've been to India. We used to go to the border, which was about 40 miles from our house. There was the, the Indian border with Pakistan. And I used to be fascinated by that. The idea that you could just kind of walk into another country. You couldn't walk. There was like a guard post. But I always used to get to go and shake hands with the guards on both sides. This is when I was like seven, eight, nine years old. It was like a real thrill was to be, be able to go there and they would let me stand in the kind of gate so that I would be standing in two countries at once. And man, that, was, that seemed like the coolest thing ever. It's kind of like, well, it's, I mean, it's like far four more corners. grand, but when we went to the Colorado, we went to the Four Corners. Right, so Four Corners... It's a similar concept, except here, of course. Yeah. It's these two countries. And, uh, yeah. That's pretty cool, babe. It was reasonably cool. And, but I've always loved India. I love Indian music. I love Indian films. Oh. Yeah. Let's talk about RRR. RRR. I don't know if anyone hopefully you've cares about things. Oscar noms. This film should have been nominated for everything, but it was at least nominated for Best Song, which in, which in the film occurs during a dance sequence that is so epic. I mean, I have to say the special effects in that were kind of on the level of Avatar. It was very enjoyable. It was really, really cool and kind of hilarious. I, mean, who, I think Jack T. Gregory first told us about it. And when he told us about it, he told us he had friends that had watched it like four or five times. Yeah. It is, it is an incredible piece of, sort of from a technical point of view, but, I mean, there are so many CG animals, computer graphic animals in it, and uh, they're really super cool. Nobody in the chat is uh, chiming in about RRR. I think it's an, it's didn't get the, it didn't, didn't get, get the, the visibility it deserves. But it's available. Was it, did we see it on Netflix, or did we rent yeah, it? Yeah, so, all right, 81 Tizzle. RRR is on my Netflix watch list. It is so good. Watch it. Watch it. It's so it was nominated just for song for a song. But the the sequence with the song, if you Google it, yeah, you you'll just... see on YouTube this dance sequence. That just tells you everything you need to know about why you should see this movie. Just watch. The, I think the dance sequence has gone pretty viral because it's so extraordinarily good. Insane. It's so joyful. It's so joyful. Crazy. It's like absolute. I mean. I, yeah, it's fun. I wish my body moved like that. Well, speaking of dance, we, we are a computer going, graphics team. Speaking of dance, we are going to see 
one of our most favoritest things, which is a Palabolus. contemporary dance performance by a group called Palabolus. And we're seeing them here in uh, Phoenix and Mesa on Friday night. This is a thing we always used to do in New York City. We'd go to the Joyce. It was at least once a year. And we looked forward. To, we just always did. And now, now we're we blessed by the fact that this delectable piece of culture has come to Phoenix. Last night we went to the theater courtesy of Sketchbook School. Because, That's right. Because we were invited by the daughter of a Sketchbook School student who actually became one. She might even be on. Is she on today? Uh, she's probably not she's on today. She joins Draw With Me. But she is. Um, but a lot of people here will know Ken Harris, Ken one Harris, of our all-time yeah. yeah, so greats. His, his, his daughter is. Lovely daughter. His daughter is a theatrical prop master set designer she's a set designer and she does the costumes yes that's right she's amazing and yeah. she's lovely and she's like yes. young and, and she just moved creative to and she's working at the phoenix theater company so yeah we went there last night we saw this play called constellations is that what it's called yeah constellations. Yeah. it was about parallel worlds about about you know the um, multiverse the, the multiverse not the facebook multiverse but about the possibility of living your life in many, many different ways. And uh, it, was, it was a really cool play. It was, it's an English play, apparently. It won a bunch of awards in England. Yeah, we, en we enjoyed it. A night out at the theater. Rather. Yeah, and then on uh, Friday we do it again. So cultured. You're so cultured, God. <laughs> the rest of the time we, we, sit, we sit at home sticks. watching reruns of uh, We've kind of hooked on Survivor. I'm, the secret's out. We're watching old seasons of Survivor that we've not seen before. Yeah, my, uh, we're not rewatching Survivor. Unfortunately, Jack but. turned us on to that. So. Oh, it is addictive. Curses! Don't do so, it if you don't want to get really sucked in. Just stay away. It's like so. For those of you who are still paying attention to drawing, <laughs> I am. Uh, I've now I've now transitioned to just adding a kind of just a black pencil. Is it just colored pencil? It's not it's graphite, black, is it? No, it's a Condoroga tri Dixon tri Condoroga. Um, which is a really nice triangular pencil, by the way. And uh, I'm using that. Cool. So the question is, because I placed this on the page rather poorly... I, I was going to say, I you're not going to get any of that I reflecting pool? or. No, I, I guess I'm not. I mean, I could do it. This It's an interesting challenge because here's the thing, is the perspective. So how do you figure out this perspective? And I didn't leave myself enough room to <laughs> figure it out. But the perspective is, how do you... You know, this is, again, it's all centered. So it is, and it's, you're looking at it head on. So the perspective is fairly straight. And perspective is something that always people get all kind of bent out of shape about. But you don't even really need to think about perspective. The you people, you almost said it. No, I didn't. Not you people. Some of you, I'm sure, are perfectly cool with drawing things in perspective. But you can get into vanishing points and stuff like that. And you could certainly figure out the vanishing point here, which is about kind of where this this door is come to think of it that's about where the vanishing point probably is but that doesn't really matter because you can just use the building itself to line your stuff up so you can go okay these trees kind of start here right and then they basically the tops of the trees are kind of the same and then the you can measure the tree so you can say let me measure a tree in the mid mid-ground, not, the, not the, all the way back, but in the mid-ground, and compare it with like the height of one of these towers. So I could say this tree that lines up with this particular tower is about that tall. You know, so I could, and I could say, there it is. It's, it intersects the, the thing there. So I can say, okay, so this, let me just use this as my most foreground one, and then look at the bottom, going all the way back to the last one, which is also fairly small lining up there and then I can just say okay so they're basically like that that's how I can figure out my perspective if you really wanted to get into it that would so, have taken I, that yeah it hurt my brain really because it's just a matter of measuring yeah. it doesn't matter how far away it is look at it as an object in anything else so you look at this object you compare it with the height of that tower if you do it in the picture you'll see it's the same thing so you can just say okay this tree lines up with this tower and it's about as two-thirds of the height of the tower so therefore I know what that is you know, and you could do the same on the other side. You could say there's that tower, there's one all the way over here. So anyway, that's kind of rudimentary. I'm not really going to get into it today.
but that's sort of how I would do it. Do you yeah. think I should unclip my microphone and go find Tommy Kane's book with his drawing? Yeah, absolutely talking? not. <laughs> to, why? Because you, you would. If you'd like to see Tommy Kane's, Tommy uh, Kane did. Of the, of, yeah, yeah, he, you can see it on Instagram. Um, so yeah, so it's nice using this this gray paper. Kind of gives me a mid tone, and then I have the white. And then if I wanted to, I could sort of add a bit more shading in there. All right, I did find it online if you want to show it. It's pretty spectacular. Tommy Kane really captured just some of the colorfulness. Yeah. He's, well, he's great. He's, he's a pretty good me. artist. He's better than he's me. He's a pretty good artist. Yeah. So how did you find it? You just Googled, just Googled Tommy Kane Taj Mahal? So yeah. Well, you can feel free, anybody who wants to. It is complimentary with... To all viewers of Draw With Me, the use of Google is included in your price. So feel free to use it. All right, so that's more or less my thing. Uh, what else? Is, you see, uh, Taj Mahal died during the childbirth of her 13th child. No, not Taj Mahal. Mumtaj Mahal. Yeah. That's what she said. Mumtaj Mahal. Yeah. Jen Cahill is reminiscing about Indian food. Oh, our favorite thing. Not having great success finding it here in Phoenix. If anybody here is in Phoenix and, and is an expert in good Indian food and can recommend something to us, we'll be really grateful because we've spent <laughs> the last almost three years figuring that out. Yeah, we have some solutions, but none of them are very convenient. None of these people have heard of RRR. I guess that film did yeah. not get its I due. Bet you, but I, bet, I bet you out of the other parts of the world. I mean, it's it's like the biggest film in Indian history, and India is the second most populous country in the world. So a lot of people have seen it. I think it's worth seeing. If you've never seen an Indian film at all, if you've never seen a Bollywood movie, it's a real kick to see. It's really fun to see. They bring in music and dancing at the most bizarre times, uh, and they they can just do really crazy, crazy things. Um, All right, a couple of questions about art. Great. So, love art questions. So, uh, did you mention what type of white pencil you were using? I was generally using. Um, which one was? You have multiple whites over there. I do. I was using. Look at you. Here you're, it is. You're using white. I was using um, a Prismacolor pencil. I was using uh, a Mitsubishi. I was using this Triconderoga. I was using a Winsor Newton white pencil. And I also had standing by a couple of Derwents, a Chroma Flow and a Pro Color. But another question that happened a ways back. Yeah. How do you sharpen your colored pencils? Uh, often. Yeah, is that really all that it is? You no. just gotta No. So here's the thing about a colored pencil. This is an important thing. Don't use a regular color regular um pencil sharpener because colored pencils have they're not it's not graphite so i have in fact i have a fresh one here i use this is the best colored pencil sharpener i've found it's by uni it's a little tiny fairly cheap thing um, and here you don't need to have this kind of a espresso cup but it's helpful and then so it is it is just designed so your colored pencil if you use this kind of a pencil sharpener, your colored pencils are much less likely to break than they would with a regular color, a regular, regular sharpener, just because of the nature of the blade. From what I understand, this is what people at, I think a Derwent originally told me. Kate Logley, who taught us she a lot might, about watercolor pencils, used to use an electric sharpener. Yeah, I mean, Derwent I mean, makes a lot of different uh, sharpeners. I found that an electric sharpener for me was just too much and things would just go awry quickly. But I find this little thing works really well. I just keep it here in a cup and uh, sharpen it will. So So are you going to do any lettering on this page? You know, I was going to, yes. Because you have about 40 minutes. 40 minutes. I have Ooh, 40 Gen minutes? Ooh, Gen C, I've never heard this. Try not to drop your color pencils so delicate they break inside. Ouch. Yeah, they can. So, all right, so here, here's some nibs. I'm going to use a dip pen. Why not? Do it. We're talking dips. 
Do you want me to find you a little quote or something nice to say? Um, sure. I don't. I have a lot. I don't have a lot of space. I was just going to write Taj Mahal. Oh, all right. So. Well, if you want to be basic, this, this is Windsor Newton calligraphy ink, white. This is Kohenor pen handle. But you can use this dip pen and ink on the gray paper worked reasonably well. Reasonably well? Well, you know, it's not the I same mean, as using... Ooh, this ink is really gloppy. <laughs> yeah, okay. So maybe I should do it in... Let me just, let me just test this thing. Yeah, it's not... It's not... Uh, not sanctioned? Well... Why don't you you know, it's not. I could use it, but not on not on TV. <laughs> In the privacy of your own home. How about gold? Ooh, that's fun. So. Fun, fun, fun. Clean off this nib a bit. Let's see what this gold ink is like. Nib just left the building. Nib just left the handle. Oh, Danny. It's okay. Yeah, it's not a good handle. There's a lot of stuff happening off camera because your hand is. Uh... All right. I think we're good. Sorry, I'm just getting this pen nib ready for prime time. See, this is the problem with just spontaneously deciding to do things. This, this is not a real endorsement for the dip pen course. Isn't it? <laughs> this is the kind of thing that happens. Yeah. And I'm going to show you how to deal with it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you could not find any other way of doing really nice, juicy gold ink like this. Or very few. Besides a dip pen. Beautiful, eh? Look at that. I must say you're quite good at this dip pen thing. I should really teach a course or something. <laughs> oh, Grace Freedy's grandson's name is Taj. Because uh, her husband is Indian. Or, no, he's Pakistani. Also, the... Season of Survivor we just finished. My favorite contestant's name was Taj. Taj George. She rocked. She should she, she should have won. Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. She didn't. I think it was from 2014. I, I don't think very many people are watching Survivor from 2014, other than us. Okay, so there, that's quite nice. Pretty. Yeah, I think a little gold ink can little gold ink. spruce up just about anything. Um, all right, I think, we're, I think we've, we can wrap this up and put it away, right? Like Judy now needs to get gold ink. Lightning speed. Good. Stefania wants to try it. Judy wants to get some gold ink. Good. Um, well, 
kind of ink am I using? I was using Windsor & Newton calligraphy ink. Here it is in the gold bottle. So, um, should we put this away? I, yeah, I think we're done. Right. I don't know. It's been a long time since <sighs> we were early. Since what? Since we were early. And honestly, with this like very complicated drawing, I thought you were going to go over length. Oh, and David wants to know what kind of nib I was using. I was using uh, a G nib. G nib by Zebra. That's that is the nib of choice. I talk a lot about this nib in the class. Uh, I explain like why you would pick a particular nib. You know, because it's easy to just go in and buy a bunch of nibs, and then you kind of get home and you're like, wait, what are these for? What do I do with them? So, um, yeah. I mean, stuff buying a bunch of nibs. It's fun to do. Is one dollar. It's not that. It's just that <laughs> they, they all seem to have different purposes, and you don't know how to find out what those purposes are. You can take calligraphy classes, but my focus isn't really on what calligraphers focus on so much. I'm trying to explain that exactly, but I'm interested in also in really... Lettering for non-calligraphers. Lettering for non-calligraphers, and also right. drawing. How do you use it to draw with? How long does it take to draw? The ink? Yeah. Depends on how thick it is. Couple minutes. Depends on how hot it is. Yeah. Depends on what kind of paper you're using. That's probably the most important variable because different paper adhere the ink. I mean, I've had ink that could take like 12 hours and I thought it was dry and it wasn't. So you have to, there's certainly a lot of things to consider. Should we recap the contest of the giveaway? The from giveaway. Our, from yes. our fabulous Which, the sponsor. Hanumula yep. Yes. Hanumula. So the Hanamula. So we're giving away this gray book. Um, do you know what size it is? is I it do. A, is I do. I'm going like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put it right into. There's a big one as well. I'm going to. This one is the medium one. Oh, no. This one is pretty big, actually. Yeah. What we're giving away is. It's big. You could make yeah, a big old small. Taj Mahal. You could put that stuff in the foreground in your drawing. <laughs> yeah. So, so mine's small. This is a bigger one, and uh, all you need to do is to write to us and tell us why you want it. And I think you will U.S. mailing address only. Right. Thank you. So why don't we just wrap up a little bit early? Why not? So here's a couple things I want to say before we go. One is we want to see your Taj Mahal or Taj's Mahal or Taj Mahal's. <laughs> what is the correct? Your drawings of the Taj Mahal. Yes. There's only one Taj Mahal, so we want to see your drawings of the Taj Mahal. And so, therefore, um, please share them with us. Post them on Facebook. Post them on Instagram. Post them in the schoolyard. And if you do post them, put hashtag SBS draw with me. Where is it? Right there. Hashtag SBS draw with me. And we'll go back probably next Tuesday and we'll gather them all up. And then at the beginning of next week's show, we'll have all the Taj's Mahal. We'll probably have some ravens too. It's kind of a weird combination, but we will probably have that. Um, Laura says she needs Indian food for lunch now. I know how you feel. So do we. But we're not going to get any. Um, yes. So what else? Danny's essays. Yes. So my essays, I write an essay every Friday, and it's coming out. And if you sign up for it, you actually get a free book. Free ebook. It's better than an ebook. <laughs> it's yes, immediate you'll, gratification. You'll get uh, you'll get you'll get this ebook. In fact, how to learn to draw and why you should. Free? Did I say it was free? You get it for free, and uh, yeah, so you'll get that. The Art for All podcast on a hiatus right now because I'm taking a break. Yeah, we're doing a million other things. Doing a million other things, including making that class, making working on another class. The secret on, film, I'm gonna, the secret project the, coming out my next week. Secret project is hopefully going to come out next week. Um, what else? That's oh, it. Yeah, no, there's more things. <laughs> uh, Spark. We're doing a bunch of things in Spark, uh, including I'm going to be teaching a special event in Spark that's coming up. And oh boy, what else? I think that's it. All right, that's enough. So, so we'll see when we see you next. It will be February. Will it? Yes, you're right. <laughs> Isn't that be, crazy? It will be February. We'll be getting ready for Valentine's. Yeah. Um, and also, as always, yes, as Carolyn says, don't forget to like before you go. That's true. Like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Here's why you should do both. 
Liking is nice. We want to be nice. Um, no, liking is nice, but also gets well, our goal with all this stuff is to get more people to draw. So if you help us by telling people about this, by liking it, by subscribing it, then YouTube shares it more, all those kinds of things happen. So if you support us, it'll be cool. The world becomes um, a happier place. Yes, I also, <laughs> as David points out, I also have a new video coming out next week about lettering. Woo Tuesday, that's going to come out. Tuesday, that is a new thing about how to letter in your sketchbook that I'm really hoping you will like. That is, and I will be sharing a bunch of my stuff, and I'll be sharing some techniques, and I'll be sharing a really cool product that is brand new that I think is amazing. Um, so that'll be next Tuesday, and if you subscribe, you'll know all about it. All right. What else? I, I think. We're, I think. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. Arlene thinks that I'm returning to normal. What is normal, Arlene? What is normal? I hope I'm not. Um, but the you. finger is better, and thank you for everyone who wrote to say uh, they were concerned about Danny. It was like a little rough going this time last week. We were uh, we were hurting, but into into every life, a little infected hangnail must fall. Deborah asked, "Where does the video on lettering post?" As I said, it'll be on YouTube. our YouTube channel, YouTube channel, Sketchbook School channel. YouTube. Uh, we'll probably send an email. Subscribe on Tuesday. Are we going to send an email about it? Well, we're going to maybe put it in it's the newsletter. It's a pretty nice video. We're going to bring the newsletter back. Yeah. The, 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 the <coughs> Excuse me. Um, are you saving this live? Saving it live? Yeah, it's on It's on our channel. Yeah. This whole thing, you can watch it. You can watch this plus the, I think we have like 200 other Draw With Me's, Draws With Me, 81 Tizzle recommending an another good Indian film, Dungal. Yeah. There's so many great Indian movies. Going back to, I don't know, I used to watch sort of Indian movies from the 50s and before they were Bollywood movies. But anyway, I'm blathering. Yes, let's it's wrap time. it up. It's, it's enough. Let us it's enough. wrap it up. Goodbye. Thank you. And I'll see you again next week.